Welcome to episode 144, Double Fours, of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. Today, we did all kinds of things this week. We got a little special swag, and we have a really special guest. I can't wait to tell you about the one and only Glenn Lundy. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So this last week was insane. We put a live in-person event on in Philly. I think we just snuck it in before they shut the whole world down again. But it was amazing. We People came in and flew in from all over the country. And we put on a live one-day event. That's why you can see me wearing the swag. So I got the pushback t-shirt. These are going to be for sale, by the way. Really great, tone-on-tone, super comfortable shirt. I'm also not wearing my usual clarity hat. I'm wearing my automotive state at the Union hat, if you can see this. Also going to be for sale. We got black on black puff embroidery. Both of these are going to be for sale soon. But today is a guest who closed down the whole event for us. He was the last speaker. One and only Glenn Lundy. Glenn has an amazing, amazing life story. He's the founder and host of the morning show Rise and Grind. He has something called the 800 Club by which he coaches dealerships in leadership to really bring their organizations together. I'm not going to make this intro uh, any much longer because you need to get the Glenn. If you struggle with things in your life, if you struggle with excuses, if you struggle with the motivation to do things, Glenn has an amazing perspective on things because he was brought so low to the point where he actually tried to commit suicide. And so we're going to talk about that in the interview. We're going to talk about what changed in his life and his mind and his heart that has led to the incremental but continual success in his life. And I hope you walk away with something you can actually apply because I hate it when there's nothing in a podcast. I listen to it and there's nothing I can apply. That's not going to be the case with this. You're going to have plenty to apply. So grab a cup of coffee, relax, and get ready to lean in to listen to the wisdom of the one and only Glenn Lundy. Glenn, thanks for taking a few minutes out to do this. I've been wanting to do this for actually a while, but you're just finding out about that. <laughs> I am just finding out about that. But yes. Dude, thank you for this. This has been incredible. Yeah, so um, people, if, if they don't know or they're just listening, we are after a day-long live in-person event where you just gave us the fire to close us out about raising the bar of average. Yes, and um, I think that your life and your story is anything but average, which is why I thought that I, I could share and have you share that with this community because it's relevant, I think, to any human walking the planet so um i'm, I'm excited so to hear kind, it again man. you're so good no. i'm so glad we connected no i mean and i mean it so why don't why don't we just start out you if someone were to look at your social media or looking like this guy looks buttoned up he's successful he's got a beautiful family growing right seven plus seven plus man seven going on eight babies coming on eight so <laughs> so if you see Glenn, he looks like he's about 29. So ah, Yeah, dude, this guy right here. Look, Look this guy, this is Paul. This is you how get, you do it. You butter him up first, and then you ask him the really hard questions. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so it didn't start this way. This is just where it is now. Sure. So you've gone through a lot of trial to get here, so maybe you could share with the people some of that story. Yeah, man. Um, life has its ups and downs, for sure. And I think we all have stories. We all have journeys. Uh, that we go on and you know my particular journey I really break it down to like two seasons there was two seasons of my life there was a a, what I call a 2d season where every decision I made like mind and body right if it looked good and it felt good I was in 100% (laughs) nothing else mattered right and then there's a season of my life that's 3d that's mind body and spirit So when you add the spiritual element and start to understand that we are spiritual beings, whatever your religious beliefs are, I'm not interested in any of that. But when you start to understand that you're a spiritual being, you're a part of something bigger, uh, then you start to realize, or I started to realize that I had abilities as well as responsibilities to be a good person, right? Mm -hmm. So in my first season, my 2D season, you know, that period of my life, I was... You know, I like to party a lot. Uh, I was what I like to call a punk. Um, <laughs> we all know. We yeah, all know what you, you know, mean. Right? I, I was a punk. Uh, I like to party a lot. And I, I started off at 20. I had my first, first of all these amazing children that I have. And having her led me to drop out of school, get into the workforce. I got into automotive. 
And in the automotive world, I was really good at automotive, but automotive was not good for me. Yep. Um, I was making money. I wasn't prioritizing my daughter. I was spending ridiculous amounts of hours uh, in the dealership world. And so my career was going up. My life outside of work was going down. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. that created this kind of quagmire uh, where I was kind of stuck in this place where my relationships were falling apart. Um, but financially, I was doing okay. And, you know, it was just a weird, uh, a weird place because I didn't have that third element I think, well, to you balance know, things out. You know what, what you mean? just said right there is, 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 I think, a really common experience amongst talented people. Um, and you look, whether it's in business or, you know, pro athletes, you see it a lot, musicians, uh, movie stars, mm. there's this dichotomy of where their, their professional life is thriving, right? They're hitting their groove because of their natural skill set, right. right? They got motivation, drive, they can talk to people, they're likable and all these things or they can sing, you know, right. and you watch this happen, but a, it really quickly it becomes apparent that something was off mm. inside. Yep. And so the world wants to be like, look how successful, but inside you feel totally different and your home life reflects something totally different. So I think this is a really common story of, of talented people totally. specifically. Yeah, you're, you're 100% spot on, man. And that's, that's exactly how it was. And so I continued down a path, burning bridges, uh, creating enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, I lost custody of my daughter when mm. she was six years old. Oh. Uh, I lost custody of her. And, and all of those things together kind of put me in this, uh, this space where I, I just decided to run away from it all, man. And so I packed up everything I owned into my white Ford Mustang, uh, which doesn't uh, fit a lot, which doesn't fit a lot and <laughs> should tell you how much of an idiot I was back then. A dad, I lived, dad with a Mustang, a dad right? with a Mustang yeah. in Flagstaff, Arizona, 7,500 feet. It snows six months out of the year. But you got that rear wheel drive Mustang. And I got a rear wheel drive Mustang. It's cool like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> right? So I pack up the Mustang. I hit the road. Um, and that really kind of began uh, a journey where... I went from leaving that, leaving Arizona, losing custody of my daughter. That led me to taking advantage of a few other people. Once I had burned every bridge along the way, yep. um, then I ended up you know, looking around one day, and here I was, man. I was in San Diego, California. I was homeless. Wow. And no one to call, nowhere to go. Uh, homelessness quickly led to hopelessness. Yeah. Hopelessness quickly led to depression. Depression quickly led to suicidal thoughts, uh, which led to me actually attempting um, to, to take my life. And I always like to share this with people when I talk about this season. Like people think the worst part of homelessness is you don't have anywhere to live. Not having stuff. You don't have any money. Yeah. You ain't got any stuff. Yeah, right. But really, the worst part of homelessness is you become invisible, completely and utterly invisible. People don't, they won't make eye contact you with, with you anymore. Maybe they're afraid you're going to mug them. Maybe they're afraid you're going to ask them for money and make them feel guilty for not giving you any. Right. Maybe they think you're a bum and you should be, you know, go get a job. You know, right. what, whatever the thought process is, people just don't make eye contact. Yeah. And Less so, than human, right? Yeah, dude. So you Makes just start to blend way. in. You start to become like a park bench or a tree or a shrub. Uh, and that feeling of invisibleness and utter alone, it's, I would never wish it on my worst enemy. It's, mm. a, it's a devastating, it's, it's almost debilitating, you know? And so I felt that, I experienced that, and I actually convinced myself that my life, that other people's lives would be better if I didn't exist. Yeah. You know? No, that's, it's, it's, I've, I've heard that a lot from people who have either attempted suicide or thought about it. Yeah. Right? You This narrative in your mind, you're like, everyone's better off without me. Exactly. Right? And so attempted, failed, clearly. Um, <laughs> if I hadn't failed, this you would be... You're terrible at it. This, if this, this right here, this interview terrible would go job. viral. Terrible job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this would be your most viral, most listened to podcast would be. if, if would that would have be. been successful. I can prove it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so obviously not successful. Um, but it was successful in doing one thing for me. Uh, when I failed at that, I remember laying there on the beach, looking up at the, at the stars, realizing how expansive the universe is, 
realizing how small my problems are in comparison to the opportunities that exist around us. Wow. And most importantly, realizing that in every situation, every negative situation I had been in, there was one guy that was there every single time. No mm -hmm. matter what city I was in, no matter what state I was in, no matter uh, what situation I was in, there was this this crazy guy that was there every always single time. Always ruining things for you. He was always ruining things for me. Yeah. And so once I realized that I was the constant in every situation, Situation, yep. and that things could revolve around me and the results would end up the same. Uh, once I realized that, I started thinking, okay, wait a minute. If I am the catalyst for all things negative in my life, then you would have to believe that you can be the catalyst of all things positive, right? It's logical. Logical. So I, I, I made a shift through that. Um, I'd like to say, you know, I jumped up and life was all hunky-dory yeah, after. Yeah, it never works like that. It doesn't work like Overnight, that. right? No, not at all. I'm very stubborn. That's for sure. Uh, I'm a <laughs> stubborn person. Company. I know I like you. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I continued to, to, to make mistakes for a few years after that, but it was really a season for me of self-exploration. I, I was like, okay, wait a minute. If I'm the catalyst of these things, then who am I? And what am I really made of? How long and ago? Give me some context. How long ago was this? 14 years ago. Okay. That's yeah. a lot of math, bro. That is. You got man, me doing a lot of math. My head's burning. I was just <laughs> looking for a year. <laughs> Yeah, you reminded us several times today it's 2020. So. That's right. It is, right? So uh, I started to explore self. Who am I? What am I made of? Uh, why am I here? How do I have this power? Where does this power come from? Um, if I can create negative, can I create positive? And that led me through a spiritual journey. I, I studied different religions. I spent some time studying Scientology mm -hmm. and Buddhism. Just real and searching. Searching everything. Searching, man. Just searching. Um, and once I unlocked in me the understanding that we are spiritual, to me, I look at it like if I were, if you and I were sitting in a room and I was like, yo, bro, that's LeBron James's son right there. You'd be like, he probably could play basketball. Like you would I just, would I would assume that you would assume not, not necessarily. Right or wrong, but hey man. Yeah. He's got something in his genes. There's right. something in yep. his DNA. I got you. Right. Yes. It's there. Yes. And so once I understood that we have a creator, mm -hmm. then immediately I shifted and was like, okay, wait a minute. There's something in my genes. So if I come from a creator, therefore I have the ability and the gift to create. I, I honestly, like you can look at the difference of a human and any other species and humans intrinsic difference is the ability to create beauty that's right create beauty like yes a bird can create a nest sure right a dog can create a hole right right and other things in your yard right but a human creates beauty and things that inspire and hope so i just that train of thought you're leading like yes 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 yeah. yes and what's different about us we that's can it create beauty that's it yeah, hundred percent, Paul. 100%. And that comes in a thousand different ways. Sure, of course. I'm not like, talking about painting. And right, that's right, one, right. Of the, one of the elements. Right. But we, we we can create beautiful things, and we can take energy that exists and convert it into something new, yeah. right? And yeah. that's it's magical. It's yes, really it magical. And so I I started exploring that. Uh, my journey in the universe led me to to Kentucky. Um, I spent a couple years in Kentucky, kind of messing around, and then I met my wife. Uh, my now wife, and she quickly got pregnant. Um, that, that's a trend for me. Uh, and so You're a creator. Yeah, I'm a creator. Exactly. Yes. And so she it's got in your DNA, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yes. That's right. So I, I met her. She got pregnant. And here I was back, full circle, 10 years earlier, like, okay. I'm in the same situation again. I've got a girl. <laughs> redo. She's pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Let's redo. What are we yeah. going to make it look like this time? Oh, man. You know? Um, and knowing more about self and, and my abilities as well as responsibilities, I just decided, like, okay, I'm going to go back into the car business, but I'm not going to let the car business change me. I'm going to change the car business. How about and that? I'm going to create a life that not only is amazing for my children and for my wife, but that is making a massive impact on everyone that I come in contact with. And so once I made that commitment, dude, here's, here's something for, for, the, for the books, for anybody listening to the podcast, if you're taking notes or anything, I want you to write this down. Commitment doesn't care how you feel. Oh, that's the truth. Commitment doesn't care. Once you make the commitment, it doesn't care if you're tired. It doesn't care if you're sick. It I doesn't care if you're traveling. Like, commitment don't give a dang about anything I else. I love this. I'm going to put it in my refrigerator. Yes, at home. sir. Yes. Because I have a bunch of kids, too. 
Right. You need to live to know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I made a commitment to make an impact in other people's lives. Mm-hmm. And that required me to study, to learn, to barely sleep, to uh, give everything 110% every single day. And through that, I've been able to acquire strategies and processes that have been able to help make me successful, the people around me successful, yep. uh, and be able to get where I am today. Unbelievable. Like, look, I, I read a little summary of the story, but I mean, the nuance and the, and the truth in that, I think a lot of people watching or listening are going to see, you know, everybody's got a different, everybody's got a different demon. Everybody's got a different low or different definition of low. You know what I mean? Like one, one of yours is your de- definition of low is going to be different than mine. But that element of, of feeling that when you, you think you're at the bottom, yeah. Right. You think you're at the bottom where you feel hopeless. I think this is a time when a lot of people have felt hopeless. Um, and honestly, in their personal and family lives, because you're stuck with yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. What does a lockdown do? Well, it strands you with yourself. No doubt. Right. There's no more. Oh, well, at work, this person, that person, the traffic, the per- right. It's easy to blame and blame and blame and blame. Sure. And what, what I feel like I hear you saying and something that I really subscribe to in my own life is the willingness to take like an unabashed personal accountability for your feelings. Yeah. Because feelings are something that should be submitted to your commitments, should be submitted to your vision. Mm -hmm. Um, But oftentimes it feels like we get that wrong. We see it all over social media. We we have feelings completely steering the ship right now in our country. No doubt. No doubt. And so as you move through this and now you're in a position in life, and I'm going to fast forward a little bit. You know, you went through the auto industry and you, you changed a dealership substantially um, grew by 800%. Mm-hmm. Um, and you decided to move out of the, that, that part of the auto industry and transition to something where you're now able to more, more scale your input and your influence in other people's lives sure. through Rise and Grind. I, I want you to share a little bit about you were very successful, but you made the decision to venture out and do something else as, as a continuation of your journey. Mm-hmm. Why would you leave a very high level success in an industry that you did change um, that really is responsible for kind of bringing you that, that next leg. Sure. What's so, what's so deep inside you that you're like, I'm going to walk away from that because something else is better. So my grandfather was an incredible, incredible human. My grandfather was a military man his entire life. Uh, married to my grandmother for 49 years. Always wore a certain tie. Every day, I never saw my grandfather not wearing a shirt and tie. Just an incredible man, six foot tall, right? Just, just this awesome human. And he ultimately ended up battling cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when he was dying of cancer, I got a phone call. I was in Kentucky and I got a phone call that was like, your grandfather has moments left to live. Oh. Like you gotta get here. And I'm thinking moments, I can't get there in moments, right? right? right. And so we do the rat race, do the thing, figure it out. I, it takes me a day and a half to get to back to Arizona, he's still hanging on, right? I walk in, I see my grandfather, this guy who, who took care of his wife for 49 years. She never had a job, she never had a driver's license. She always knew that her husband was gonna take care of her, right? Like he was just this, this model, model citizen, just yeah. an incredible oh, yeah. dude, oh, yeah. right? And so I walk in and here he is in the nursing gown with the slit behind him and, and tubes everywhere. All and he's lost yeah, all this away. weight, all his that. eyes are hollow. Like I don't even recognize the guy on the table at all, but he's alive, right? He's alive. So then we have to wait because I have more family members that are all over the country because we're all military, or they're all military. I was never military. They're all military. And so everybody has to get. So finally, my, my aunt, she finally arrived. She was in Florida. She's the last one. It's two and a half days from that initial phone call. Grandpa's still there, still alive, even though they said he's got moments, moments left to live. Right, he's hanging on. He's hanging on. Last family member arrives. We stand in a semicircle around his bed. He says, my grandfather says to my stepdad, he says, Everett, that's my stepdad's name. Everett, will you please come over here and tell me my favorite joke? Well, my grandfather was military his whole life, so some of his jokes are dirty. Yeah, all right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know a dirty duke's coming. <laughs> so my stepdad goes over there, and he leans in. He says, Al, that's my grandfather's name. He says, hey, Al, what do you call Moby Dick's father? And my grandpa cracks a little bit of a smile. He says, what? My stepdad leans in. He says, Papa Boner. Right? <laughs> And so I don't know what kind of listeners you have on your podcast. We're good, we're good, we're good. Maybe you have to edit that. No, we're good. Right? And so we laugh and we chuckle just a little bit. 
We laugh and we chuckle, and at the same time, the tears are pouring down our face, right? Yeah. And so right after that, my grandfather says, bring me my wife. And so my grandmother, they were married 49 years. My grandmother, she's four foot two. She walks over, right? She walks over. She climbs into the bed. And my grandfather wraps his arms around her. And he dies on right there in that moment. It's like from a freaking movie. Incredible, bro. Incredible, right? So in response to your question, I learned two things from that experience. The very first thing I learned is that we are spiritual beings, unequivocally. Nobody can argue with me on this. Science cannot explain to me how Grandpa hung on for two and a half days for the last family member, was able to get told his favorite joke. Some coincidence, for sure. And die with his yeah. wife in his arms, right? Like, science can't explain that to me. And so I know, without a shadow of doubt, that we are spiritual beings. It taught me that. But the second thing that it taught me is we are most comfortable in life right before death. You see, there was a moment just before Grandpa passed away, there was a moment where the light came back in his eyes. It was like his body filled back up. It was like I recognized the guy on the table all of a sudden, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was brief. It didn't last very long, yep. but he was comfortable. The pain had gone away. And so from that experience, I'm co constantly editing my life because I'm not ready to die yet. I got these kids to raise, I got, I got people to impact, I have a story to tell. And so in that particular situation at the dealership, we just reached a point where we had reached the pinnacle, right? Like, yeah, I was super comfortable, bro. I was making great money, right? Yeah. Incredible money, face of the dealership, had tremendous success, had made a name for myself in the auto industry, yeah. had the white picket fence and the kids and the wife and all of those things. Dude, that scares the crap out of me, right? That's when I'm, I'm not interested in moving towards death. I'm interested in moving towards life. So I had to make a decision at that point. Okay, great. We've come this far. We've learned this much. What else can we go out and learn? And how can we continue to create and grow and impact so that I can continue to live, man? That's an amazing perspective. I didn't know what you were going to say. I didn't know what you were going to say, but I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you know... I feel like that this is just the beginning of of me diving into these things because I, I obviously have a lot to learn from you and a lot oh, to learn from your experiences. Kind of. So, um, which is one of the reasons that I think I make content is because I have the opportunity to to learn from people and share with a lot of other people that want to learn. Sure. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to unpack it all today, but I do want to say this. So, the, this podcast is really about giving people perspective, sure, and clarity is what I, you know what how I dub it on where they are on the map so that they can take the next few steps in the right direction, right? We never know where we're going to really end up. Sure. So if, if you could say something to, to this audience and try to help frame up a little bit of perspective, you know, obviously it has to be a little more general, but w what are you saying to people to help them find some perspective in their life at this moment? And let's even be specific at this time in our country's, uh, in our country's journey at this yeah. time and, and, you know, with COVID and our emotional journeys, what do you think? Uh, or what would you say to people to help them find some perspective? So there's this really cool book, right? This is the number one best-selling book of all time. It's sold 3.6 billion <laughs> copies, okay? 3.6 billion copies. That's a lot of... All right? The second best-selling book of all time is the Harry Potter series. It's sold <laughs> 700 million. Yeah. <laughs> okay? This book sold 3.6 billion copies, right? Now, it's called the Bible, and I know some people get all freaked out when we talk Bible, right? But I like to share that with f folks because I'm a student. I study. And if it sold 3.6 billion copies, there's got to be something good something in there. Something to it, right? There's something to it, right? <laughs> so in that book, there's a story of a widow. And the widow, she loses her husband. She has nothing. She doesn't have any money. She doesn't have any finances. She doesn't know how she's going to survive. And as the disciples walk through, she shares with them her plight. And so they tell her, well, grab a bottle Grab, grab all the bottles that you can gather and we'll give you some perfumes that you can ultimately go sell in the market so you can be financially free. So she looks around her room, she finds her, her house and she's got nothing. She, she finds a couple bottles. And then she goes around the whole neighborhood and she gathers bottle after bottle after bottle after bottle after bottle. And as, they, as she grabs them, they just keep filling them. It just fills, it fills, it fills, it fills, it fills. Like there, the perfume never runs out Keeps until going. she has everything overflowing. More than enough for her and generations to come is what it says in the Bible, right? It's a miracle, it's crazy. So the reason I share this story with people right now is I think everyone needs to understand that the miracles in life are always come from what's left. 
They never come from what you've lost and they'll never come from the things you've yet to gain. They come from right here where you are today. You have everything you need to create your miracles in your life. So with the things that are going on in the world, we've lost some freedoms, we've lost some abilities to interact or combat or whatever. No need to worry about that. Instead, ground yourself. Look around at the resources that you currently have. Be grateful for where you are and understand that from that, you have the ability to create whatever life you want to live. Glenn, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend a few minutes. I really appreciate you taking the of time course. to just share and be such a sor source of energy and inspiration um, and just open handedness for us. So thank you. Yeah, man, of course. I appreciate you. Everybody say bye to that guy. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. So there you have it. Glenn is one of the most genuine people I've ever met. And as you can probably tell, there's no shortage of optimism and positivity, but not just for optimism and positivity's sake. There's actually a tether there. And the tether is what keeps him moving forward in a way that isn't drifting this way and that way. It keeps him linear. So I'm glad I was able to hold that event in Philly. So I was able to pull Glenn aside for a few minutes to do the podcast. I hope that you'll go check out his morning show, Rise and Grind, every single morning. Um, GlennLundy.com. You can get to all of his ecosystem, all of his stuff. He just launched a really great daily planner that has some amazing rules in it um, that are really easy to follow. So stuff that makes sense, like no phone first thing in the morning, right? Mm, that kind of makes sense. If you don't look at your phone first thing in the morning, Amazing things happen to that first hour. But if you wake up and start doing this right away, let's check what bad news is there I can just fill my head with so I can tell myself a story of the narrative of how today's going to go. Oh, man, more more protesting. Oh, no, more fraud. Oh, no, more fighting. Oh, no, more, right? Why do we even do that to ourselves? I don't know. Either way, I'm so glad you spent a few minutes with us today. Just We're going to put these up for sale again. If you want an awesome pushback t-shirt, a black on black, a Sodu hat, uh, they'll be for sale. I hope you grab one because you know, I, don't, I don't mess around when it comes to swag. I get the good stuff. All that to say, I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you're pressing into the community. I hope you join us next week. And until then, pursue clarity. You just got to